the University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined. Good day, my name is Lise Kholokwete. I will be your host for this online presentation. I'd like to take this opportunity and greet all our attendees. Welcome to the UJ Grade 12 online seminar. I hope this will be a fruitful and worthwhile session and that all your queries will be answered during this presentation. This presentation will cover topics such as faculties, orange carpet, applications, campuses, facilities, and residences. We have seven faculties and the College of Business and Economics. Speaking of such, here's a video giving more details of our campuses and facilities. Imagine an area that spans across 450,000 square meters or 450 football fields. Well, this is the total built up area of UJ. UJ is one of the largest residential universities in South Africa with 25 on campus residences. UJ has several libraries where you and your fellow students will find a place to meet and study together. Here you will have access to over 540,000 volumes of literature. The campuses are all custom designed and multifunctional. The general layout of the different campuses provides for easy access to lecture halls, libraries, micro laboratories, auditoriums, sports facilities, health clinics, student centers and residences. Our lecture halls are equipped with all the latest audiovisual equipment and situated within quick walking distance of each other. Student centers on the various campuses house a multitude of shops including banks, bookshops, medical facilities and fast food outlets. In focusing on the total development of its students, the university provides excellent sporting infrastructure, gyms, athletic stadiums, soccer, hockey, cricket, rugby, netball fields, tennis and squash courts, and indoor sports centers. At UJ, you'll be able to participate in diverse cultural and artistic societies, political and academic organizations, and social clubs. This is what makes us such a unique and expressive, energetic and creative student body. The Song and Dance Company is one of the jewels of this institution and presents two major productions annually. The world-renowned UJ Choir is reflective of South Africa as well as the student body, echoing its multicultural diversity through beautiful song and expression. After watching that video, one can already imagine themselves roaming around at one of our campuses. I'm happy to be speaking to you from the University of Johannesburg. In the studio today, we have representatives from our faculties. Welcome to everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Melissa Zonotwala from the University of Johannesburg. In studio today, we are joined by the Faculty of Education, and I've got a beautiful lady by the name of Ruth and Kenneth joining us today. Thanks to the two of you for being part of this session, and welcome. Thank you. Lovely. Um, going back to the words of a wise man who once said that it takes a village to raise a child, and I actually feel like when it comes to the Faculty of Education, it takes a faculty of education to give one a good tool that will help them to navigate their future. Now within the landscape of education in South Africa, looking at the importance of early childhood development, the likes of leadership management, as well as science and technology, what would you tell us about your faculty? Thank you, and um, thank you very much for having us here. The Faculty of Education uh, strives towards dynamic knowledge making for the 21st century. The world is changing and the world will continue to change. Definitely. We're talking about the fourth industrial revolution and because of that it is important to provide an education and knowledge uh, development that can respond 
to the needs and demands of the 21st century. And that is what the Faculty of Education strives to do in producing the knowledge, producing research, in equipping um, pre-service and in-service teachers to be able to meet those kinds of demands of an uncertain, changing world. The faculty offers academic programs on two campuses, namely the Soweto campus and the Auckland Park Kingsway campus. We also have the Centre for Education Rights and Transformation situated in the research village on Auckland Park, Banting Road campus. And in the Soweto campus, we have got three academic develop, um, um, departments, namely the educational psychology, educational leadership and management, and childhood uh, education. And the campus is also the home of two National Research Foundation chairs. Um, that is the education and care in childhood and the chair in integrated studies of learning, language, um, science and mathematics in the primary school. And there's also the postgraduate educational psychology programs which is being offered um, at this SWC campus, the Soweto campus, and it attracts a large number of high caliber students. Oh, great. That's interesting to hear. Um, now, looking in terms of the offerings within the Faculty of Education, now for someone with passion for teaching and learning, uh, what qualifications would they look forward to studying within the Faculty of Education. Would you touch on that through for us? Yes, sir. Um, so we have a number of programs from foundation phase, as you mentioned, um, early childhood development. Mm -hmm. You can um, study also a teaching degree towards uh, teaching intermediate phase, senior phase and FET, as well as postgraduate programs. Oh, lovely. Oh, one can even go on to postgraduate studies as well. Yes, you can pursue academia within the various fields uh, of education. So what we do is that we, we don't only cater for pre-service teachers who are starting out on their journey to becoming teachers. Oh, yes. We also cater for in-service teachers and those who seek to develop their professional um, um, practice. So you can do a B.Ed. Bachelor of Education degree in the foundation phase, which is from grade R to get grade um, grade uh, three, oh, yes. intermediate phase, which is from grade four to grade seven. So you are being prepared to teach learners in those grades. And then senior and FET phases, which is from grade seven to your grade 12. Mm -hmm. And even beyond that, there are some people who feel that they might have acquired other degrees, but they've got a passion for teaching and learning. So what do we do with those ones? We are offering for those uh, kinds of people the PGCE, Postgraduate uh, Qualification in Education, where the, it w we then prepare them with the skills and the knowledge that they have about their relevant fields. They can take that and incorporate it into education and also be prepared to become teachers um, as well. Oh, great to know. Now tell me, would someone who would love to further or even explore other avenues within teaching, is a learner coming from high school limited to only just studying within the Faculty of Education and become a teacher in one of the levels that you've mentioned? For instance, you did mention intermediate, and then you spoke about FET as well. Could one, for instance, see themselves lecturing at a university? Yes, um, by all means. Every, um, I am working in the Faculty of Education as um, a lecturing staff, and I also was prepared. Um, I did my Bachelor of Education as oh, well nice. in the Faculty of Education. So I'm talking to actually someone who's doing the application here. Yes. Oh, that's good so, to know. And then once you complete your B.Ed., your Bachelor of, of Education, then you do your postgraduate studies, you do your honors, then you do your masters, and then opportunities depending on where it is that you want to, to see yourself. And also the type of students that we prepare, and we will speak about that uh, later on when we talk about the various departments in the Faculty of Education, that um, some people are trained as teachers the use of technology and so on, and they end up in different fields, not only related to the classroom. Oh, yes. So because some of them become instructional designers and things oh, yes. like that. So, But the foundation that they get 
is based on the bachelors of education from the faculty of education oh well that's quite interesting to know about and then if one then looks in terms of um, projects within the faculty of education what would you tell someone now at home who's looking at venturing into education and who'd love to become part of your faculty any success stories new developments what have you been up to or what are you actually part of i think i'll allow ruth to start with that one because she's very passionate about that uh, <laughs> that space <laughs> oh yes ruth thank you so much so in terms of the faculty development uh, we are very passionate about equipping our students especially those who just come from high school with skills to navigate the university space and the changing world as we are getting we're in getting into the fourth industrial revolution there's certain competencies so we have developed a an online orientation program called the first year orientation for faculty of education students mm -hmm. and this entails curtailing information and uh, bring it to one space where students understand the different support services that exist if they are having mental health issues for instance they can reach out to psychiat Sci if they have finance issues they can reach out to the relevant departments and organizations within the university so what we did with that online space is to ensure that uh, uh, given the global pandemic that prevents us from being physically uh, available on the on campus and accessing those support services, the students can just access that information in one space. Um, and that is also more than it being a space where students can access information and know about support services, it's also a space where we welcome them as new family members of the Faculty of Education, where they are assigned uh, specific tutors and they're part of WhatsApp groups and email groups that uh, just check up on them all the time, help them with their assignments if needs be, um, and equip them with the particular skills to navigate the university space successfully. So that is one of the pro projects that we uh, have recently undertaken. And also given the era of social media and all of oh that, yes, yes, yes. we yes. definitely <laughs> have to integrate mm. technology to this ongoing learning experience. Yes. Absolutely. We've realized that even though we have a learner management system called Blackboard, where students check the an announcements and they interact with their lecturers and the tutoring staff, it's very difficult to have them on the, that platform on a daily basis. While on the other hand, they are on Instagram every five minutes. So we've realized that we need to utilize that space. So we have a faculty of education um, influencer who has been appointed, me, mm. and that person oh, is okay. responsible uh, for well just, done. thank you so much. Um, that person is responsible for disseminating information and making sure that it's, it's reached um, at a faster pace than it would be in the LMS, but making sure that those uh, uh, announcements and that information distributed on social media also comes back to the learner management system and they can find it on either platform. Oh, great. So and in a case whereby I've got other commitments or I just cannot make it on time on campus, now you saying to me I can be able to actually have my lessons from the comfort of my home yes. and be able to interact with the tutors, as you've, as you've mentioned, without yes. being on campus. Absolutely, absolutely. Even if you're in another province, as long as you have data connection and you're able to uh, avail yourself at the time where the tutors are available, definitely you will be assisted. And we also we also make sure that none of our students actually fall off falls off the grid, so to speak. Oh yes. So we try to follow up on them and see if some of them are fading, oh. for whatever reasons. We are able to to track and see that so and so is fading we need to intervene make contact with them what is going on we don't see you participating as you used to mm -hmm. another very exciting program that um, we have established in the faculty of education is what we call the scratch coding club um, which started as a creative um, learning um, a space where we got all of our pre-service teachers oh. invited from pgce um, senior FET phases, intermediate phase, foundation phase, to come and participate in the creative learning um, space using Scratch coding language so that they can see how can we use these kinds of tools for teaching and learning purposes. And then that developed into the current Scratch coding club um, where every week on a Saturday morning the group of pre-service teachers, they meet with some facilitators to work on some projects, you know, coding things here oh, and there and develop, the, and, fun. Yes, and develop their own creativity and think about how to creatively teach um, 
their their learners when they go into into the into the classroom and using that then as a tool that can be used uh, and that fits in well with the the demands of the 21st century and the fourth industrial revolution and by studying with the faculty of education at uj you will definitely come out the other side with the competences mm -hmm. that are necessary for making it in the 21st century and to be able to teach learners whether at primary school or high school mm -hmm that will also be able in their own lives to meet the demands of the 21st century. So we are transferring knowledge. What, we, what you get from the Faculty of Education, you will be able to practice and transfer it into, into practice and in various contexts in life as well. Oh, very interesting. With such readiness coming from the Faculty of Education and the University of Johannesburg, definitely the future looks bright. and. Um, these young learners are definitely in good hands. Good day, uh, we're here with the faculties today and we have Pilati here from the law faculty. Welcome Pilati. First up, tell us a bit more about your faculty. Uh, thank you for having me Lara. Um, the faculty of law um, in terms of size is deemed to be one of the smallest at the University of Johannesburg, but it, it refuses to um, identify itself as such. As they say, um, small dynamite comes in small packages. The Faculty of Law has um, made sure that through the years they punch above their weight and um, they're producing world class um, uh, students and uh, excellent research. So, in terms of qualifications, what's your options? Um, the Faculty of Law offers um, three undergraduate qualifications, the BA Law and the BCom Law, which are three-year qualifications, as well as the LLB. We usually encourage our students to do uh, the BA Law and BCom Law, which are our three-year qualification, and then proceed and do the LLB, which is uh, an additional two years, uh, meaning that the students will um, exit the University of Johannesburg on undergraduate level with two qualifications instead of one. So two qualifications in five years? Yes, correct. And then you'll be able to practice law? Yes. So Pilati, why specifically law at UJ and not at another institution? Um, I think it is important to note that in terms of the, the world rankings, um, the Faculty of Law at the University of Johannesburg has been ranked uh, in the top 150 with the QS ranking. And the qualifications that we offer are internationally recognized. So it, it is important that the students come and study with us in order to acquire one of the best law degrees in, in, in the world. And in terms of support, I know coming from school as a grade 12, you actually know little to nothing. Um, what, what do you do from faculty side to support your students? We have one of the strongest tutor, um, tutoring systems. We offer our students um, a lot of help, not only in terms of academics, but also socioeconomic issues. And we make sure that we support them from first year up until the final year. Um, we also have a law mentor who's um, appointed permanently to be able to guide the students as well as the law, I mean the law tutors throughout their studies um, at UJ. So after your studies, you have to go and do your articles. Do you expose your students in any way to, to law firms, um, to that what's coming? Um, we surely we do that. Um, once a year, uh, we do have the career fair or the, uh, the law career days. We also have an opportunity that our students can interact with the, the different law firms or any commercial law um, companies that are available in South Africa or sometimes even over the all over the world. We do have some of the international guests that come and present on international law or international commercial law and we do make sure that we invite our students. We also have the prestige evening um, where we award the top performance at our university. Uh, at the prestige evening also our law firms um, do sponsor some awards and uh, they get to also present or even talk about um, what their law firm specializes in. So Pilati, any news within the faculty? Any, anything you want to share for, uh, with us? 
Uh, certainly, um, there's a lot happening at the law faculty at the University of Johannesburg. Um, recently, our students won the Carl's Moot Court competition, and um, two of our students that participated in the competition won best speaker, and the other one was deputy best speaker. They also won those competitions. We have a lot of trophies to show for that. It is the, a remarkable uh, achievement uh, for our faculty. So this was a local competition? It was an international competition. Um, uh, 160 teams participated and it had three elimination rounds and our faculty came out top. So participating both locally and internationally and performing as you're performing? Yes. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us, Pilati. I'm sure students now have an insight into what to expect um, if you study law. Um, thank you. Good day and welcome to another episode of the UJ webinars. I'll be your host, Melissa Zonotwala from the University of Johannesburg. In studio today, we have the Faculty of Health Sciences and we have Pansy to represent us. A very good day to you, Pansy. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing, sir? I'm also keeping well. Thank you so much. Um, Pansy, tell us about your faculty. The faculty offers learners professional curricula encompassing innovative methods of training with a focus on problem-based education, complemented by appropriate facilities, including a well-equipped dissection facility and laboratories. Our on-site training center ensures that students receive a wide range of relevant experience under the supervision of qualified practitioners complemented by placements in relevant service rendering facilities. Postgraduate studies form an important component of the faculty's activities. In collaboration with various partners, including but not exclusive to the National Research Foundation, Medical Research Council and the World Health Organization, we strive to address key challenges relevant to the South African situation. In keeping up with our pursuit of excellence, we are constantly re-evaluating our approaches to teaching, learning, and assessment. Program reviews, external advisory committees, and quality assurance initiatives are some of the examples of how we ensure that we remain leaders in our relevant fields. Our faculty is committed to community development and various programs that are involved in sustainable, social, and community outreach programs. Furthermore, our focus on lifelong learning remains core from the day our learners enter our programs and throughout their careers. The faculty is extremely proud to be ranked by Times Higher Education in the top 600 health sciences faculties among the more than 20,000 qualifying universities internationally, and these include faculties with medicine programs. Oh well, thank you for that information, Pansy. It was quite interesting to know Definitely. that one is in the right faculty. Yes. Now tell us, for someone who's got interest within the University of Johannesburg and um, that might want to study but not sure which faculty to study with, if now they were to come and study within your faculty, mm -hmm. what would you say? The Faculty of Health Sciences continues to offer learners a preferred learning experience with real life skills practiced in our on-site health training facilities and in other off-campus and community clinics and public hospitals. We place high emphasis on quality assurance while offering world-class curricula. Furthermore, our academics are recognized for their expertise and continue to serve on provincial, national, and international advisory committees, regulatory boards, and committees of the Health Professions Council of South Africa, HPCSA, the Allied Health Professions Council of South Africa, AHPCSA, and the South African Nursing Council, SANC. Very impressive. The faculty continues to offer advanced excellence in teaching and learning through multiple initiatives, including maintaining an appropriate enrollment profile, the enrollment of outstanding students from diverse backgrounds, maintaining excellent success and retention rates, offering curricula that are current, internationally aligned and quality reviewed, encouraging innovations in teaching and learning, contributing to the scholarship of teaching and learning, and delivering students who are ready for the world of work. The use of technology in teaching within the faculty is now universal. The primary modality for moving teaching online was the Blackboard Learning Management System, 
LMS. Course content is placed online in various formats, including notes, pre-recorded lectures, and narrated PowerPoints. This enables students to access material at any time while also enabling repeated access for revision. Discussion boards and live discussions on the LMS are integrated into course delivery to promote peer learning. Our rated researchers have national, continental and international recognition and acknowledgement for their work and our activities within the Medical Research Council and the World Health Organization have made a unique contribution to urban planning and related interventions. Over the past five years, the faculty has taken significant strides in increasing its stature and reputation by focusing on the quality, integrity and impact of its research through creating an enabling environment for researchers, attracting and investing in high quality staff, inviting outstanding national and international academics to collaborate as visiting professors and research fellows, attracting a diverse and talented pool of postgraduate students and postdoctoral fellows, increasing external research income and promoting a culture of innovation by conducting applied research with the potential to lead to commercialization. The faculty drives sustainable and relevant community development projects as well as various programs involved in sustainable social investment and community outreach programs. Clinical training within our qualifications also crucially expand and expose the training of our students to the challenges faced in public health within our communities. The faculty has had several achievements in terms of enhancing its international profile for global excellence and stature, including increasing the proportion of international students, recruiting international academics of stature, including visiting professors, postdoctoral research fellows, varying from Europe, the United States of America, Australia, and Africa, increasing the number of partnerships with international universities and African countries to secure funding and enhance collaboration. Very interesting to know that um, one can even further their studies into postgrad um, mm -hmm. level within the Faculty of Health Sciences. Yes, now tell us some of the courses that one would find within your faculty. Okay. The faculty offers undergraduate and postgraduate qualifications in the following departments. Biomedical Sciences, Chiropractic, mm -hmm. Complementary Medicine, Emergency Medical Care, Environmental Health, Human Anatomy and Physiology, Medical Imaging and Radiation Sciences, Nursing, Optometry, Podiatry, and Sports and Movement Studies. Oh well, that was a mouthful and quite interesting for someone leaving high school soon, soon to be joining the University of Johannesburg and study further within the Faculty of Health Sciences. Now tell us, Pensy, what are the new developments within the Faculty of Health Sciences? The Departments of Podiatry and Medical Imaging and Radiation Sciences, MERS, acquired equipment that opens new pathways for innovative health research in the fourth industrial revolution domain related to 3D orthotics and the measurement of radiation. These will enable cutting edge research in the respective fields that can have significant implications for practice in the future. The MERS department identified the need for a virtual simulation based education tool to replicate the clinical environment. The department designed and constructed a simulation of the x-ray tube as an alternative to tutorials within the x-ray clinic. Other departments, such as EMC, identified alternative software solutions which empower students to engage in simulation learning online. The Department of Emergency Medical Care is currently busy with the construction of an on-campus medical rescue simulation center. This exciting new facility will be the first of its kind in the country wow. and it features a number of innovative integrated technologies that will allow for high fidelity simulation of a range of urban search and rescue, aviation and aquatic rescue incidents. This new center should be completed and operational during 2022. The faculty is home to four research centers, the Laser Research Center, the Water and Health Research Center, and Olympic Studies. The newest of which is the Biomedical Engineering and Health Technology Research Center, known as BEAT. 
The BEAT Virtual Research Center is a cross-faculty initiative between the faculties of health sciences, engineering, and the built environment. The BEAT Research Center will conduct basic, applied, and strategic research in biomedical engineering, health innovation, healthcare technology, and mHealth, as well as embark on delivering services through consultancy, education and training in terms of short learning programs, and contract research in the fourth industrial revolution. From an innovative perspective, the Water and Health Research Center worked with the Department of Complementary Medicine to test the effects of various homeopathic tincture on bacteria. The center is currently investigating the possibility of commercializing these compounds produced by bacteria strains. The Department of Emergency Medical Care worked with UJ's Technology Transfer Office on a stretchy chair project that intends offering cost-effective stretchers or stay chairs to ambulance services and clinics in South Africa. The following programs were submitted to the Department of Higher Education and Training and Council for Higher Education for consideration and approval for offering. An advanced certificate in medical rescue, a postgraduate diploma in clinical simulation, nursing postgraduate diplomas in critical care nursing, midwifery, occupational health nursing, nursing education, health service management, and primary care nursing. The Department of Sports and Movement Studies, together with the BEAT Research Center, is finalizing an MPhil Healthcare Innovation and Technology. Oh, wow. Lovely. In conclusion, the faculty will continue in its efforts to advance the university's six strategic goals, building on the faculty's successes over the past five years, and proactively working towards addressing challenges and gaps. The faculty will continue to pursue and build strategic partnerships with collaborators within and beyond academia at all levels, nationally, in Africa, and beyond the continent as a mechanism to further research excellence, ensure relevance, and expand resources available for research, teaching, and community engagement. Oh, wow. There you've heard it. One is then spoiled for choice when it comes to offerings within the Faculty of Health Sciences. Thank you so much, Pensy, for your time. And we hope that you will apply yourself and make sure that you choose wisely when it comes to this broad variety of courses offered within the faculty. Thank you, Pensy. Thank you very much for enlightening us. I hope the learners have benefited from this information session. Talking about benefits, UJ has initiative programs for top achieving learners called the Orange Carpet Rewards Program. For those of you that may not be familiar with this, here's an explanation of how it works and how one can qualify for it. Are you a top performer in grade 11? Well, we have good news for you. You may very likely find yourself on the Orange Carpet Rewards Program. The Orange Carpet Rewards Program is a UJ initiative to recognize top achievers. The objective of this program is to allow top performing learners early conditional admission to the university as well as special benefits. To qualify for these benefits, a learner must obtain a minimum admission point score APS of 37 and above with a level 6 or higher in all subjects in their final grade 11 results. Final acceptance will be dependent on the learner maintaining these results in their final grade 12 results. With an APS of 37 and above, you will receive the following benefits. You are conditionally accepted at UJ. You will receive a guaranteed bursary according to your APS score anything from 50 to 100% off of your tuition fees. Your registration fee and ICT levy will be waived. You'll receive a voucher of 2,000 rands for textbooks or a tablet. You will be guaranteed accommodation placement in a UJ residence. For those of you who have played sport at provincial or higher will qualify for a sports bursary. Faculty and departmental specific incentives include career counseling, exclusive VIP events, and discounts. Each study program has its own specific minimum requirements to comply with in order to apply for the program. So, how do you know whether your admission point score, 
as an APS meets your course requirements. Let us use an example to help you navigate this process. Let's say that you want to study civil engineering at UJ. Go to the UJ prospectus and look for the relevant faculty, in this instance, the Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment. Now, look for the study program, Civil Engineering. Note that you need a total APS of 32 in order to qualify to apply for the Civil Engineering program at UJ. In this table, you will see that there is a minimum admissions criteria for each of the school subjects. In this case, you need a minimum of 60% for English, which is equivalent to a level 5 on the APS rating. Then, you will need a minimum of 60% or rating of 5 for each of the following subjects. Mathematics, Physical Science and with your remaining three subjects, you must ensure that you score 32 APS or higher. Points are awarded for the six symbols on your Grade 11 report according to the scale. To make sure you are calculating the score accurately, life orientation must be excluded when you calculate the total APS. To be able to gain access to a faculty and to a specific program, applicants are required to have the appropriate combination of recognized National Senior Certificate or Independent Examination Sport subjects, as well as certain levels of achievement in these subjects. Please consult the UJ Prospectus for further guidance. More detailed information about Orange Carpet Rewards can be found on our UJ website. Now that we've discussed the Orange Carpet Rewards program, let's talk about applications and the process which needs to be followed. All applicants need to apply with their final or promotional grade 11 results. Applications open as from 1st of April and they close towards the end of September. Please refer to the UJ website for additional application information. To add on what you have seen here today, UJ has noteworthy achievements when it comes to university rankings. Remember to also visit our website for more information. Good luck and all the best going forward. The University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.